Hi, we're glad you're back with us again for Kentucky Farm Bureau's Bluegrass and Back Row. Today we're headed for Lexington, Kentucky to visit a metal sculptor known worldwide. And we're going to visit a family that's a finalist in Kentucky Farm Bureau's Outstanding Young Farm Family Competition. And finally, we'll speed over to Sparta, Kentucky to visit the Kentucky Speedway. We'll have all these stories and more as you travel with us today on Kentucky Farm Bureau's Bluegrass and Back Row. Rod Lindauer has sculptures all over the world. Today we're going to look over his shoulder as he creates some unusual metal furniture. I mainly work in stainless steel and, and you know I've always been kind of attracted to the uh, to the concept of you know like permanence or you know endurance uh, you know when I was a kid I was fascinated by the pyramids and archaeology I mean just like read everything I could on the pyramids and uh, you know I, I, it really appeals to me this idea that uh, you know these stainless steel sculptures I mean you know barring some future you know, industrial scrapping, you know, will survive, you know, effectively forever. I mean, we've created really one of the most durable, long-lasting materials ever. So, I mean, you know, next to gold, I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a little humbling sometimes. That idea of permanence kind of, you know, kind of makes it uh, hard to just throw something out there, you know, I mean, it really requires like a lot of, you know, a lot of thought because, you know, I, I don't want to have, you know, something second rate just kind of hanging around my neck like an albatross for, you know, the rest of my life because, you know, there's no planned obsolescence. It doesn't, you know, it's, it's not going to rust away. A lot of artists have trouble kind of releasing their work and uh, you know they feel like possession over it or they fall in love with their own work and I, I think that uh, you know just kind of part of my makeup is that I'm you know I'm always kind of striving to do a little bit better so generally once I complete a piece you know I'm able to let it go um, I don't I, I really have very little of my own art I, I don't think that I have a single thing that I wouldn't that I wouldn't sell or give away and uh, you know because I can always make more. I guess most recently I, you know, I completed the sculpture at Main and Rose. It's called Lock and Key. It's in, here in downtown Lexington and it's a you know it's a 19 foot high stainless steel piece, uh, t two pieces and uh, kind of in coordination with each other and uh, I'd never seen it standing up until the day it was erected you know because uh, the ceilings in here aren't, aren't tall enough and uh, you know so on the on the day it was tipped up you know and, and bolted into place and I got to walk around I just thought wow you know this is you know it's exactly like I imagined in my mind As far as the finishes on my work go, uh, they're all done by hand. It's not a machine process. You know, there's, you know, the, frequently it's kind of a repeating pattern, but, uh, you know, I, I, I do that all, all by hand. On, on the stainless steel especially, you know, there, there, there's generally a, you know, there's not a random kind of uh, helter-skelter pattern. It, you know, it's generally, uh, it's, you know, it's generally a repeating pattern. And, you know, each piece kind of evolves a, a little differently as, as far as pattern goes. I mean, there's some, transitional similarities but uh, and then you know a lot of a lot of the furniture that I'm doing now I'm kind of moving in a different direction I'm, I'm using a, 
like a heavily rusted finish that'll be like oiled and then you know sealed so you really get this kind of like leather effect on on metal you know it really looks like kind of like a rich polished you know leather and there's really nothing new under the sun you know like somebody else's you know done finishes probably somewhat like this but you know again I try to you know I try to get the most perfect finish that I can it's hard to say where ideas come from really I, I do feel like kind of I have an endless supply I have you know I very rarely sketch because I'm not very good at it but you know I have notebooks where I you know I'll make quick sketches and, and little notes and I, I think I probably have more stuff kind of written down than I could ever possibly you know hope to execute myself. I think that good art has a timeless quality and that uh, you know it speaks to kind of a general human condition and me personally I, you know I feel like that art should be uplifting. It's frustrating trying to, you know, create a perfect anything, you know, perfect piece of sculpture, perfect piece of furniture, but, uh, you know, that desire for perfection does kind of drive my craft and, uh, and something I've always been proud of, you know, is, is the fact that, uh, you know, sometimes people, you know, look at an edge and say, wow, you know, they think it's machine made or, or whatever, and, and I made it by hand, and I think that, uh, you know, kind of part of what turns modern art off to the general public is that so you know th that a lot of artists really you know especially working in kind of the assemblage phase they you know th the craft is really kind of secondary to their thinking about their art you know and uh, I think a lot of people look at it and say wow you know I, I could do that or you know and, and, and probably they could you know I've always kind of tried to kind of head the other direction you know I, I really want to you know blow people's socks off you know when they when they see my stuff I, I want them to be impressed and that's it